Hey everybody, it's Future Inventions here with a tutorial for chroma keying in Final Cut Pro X. So I've seen a few tutorials online, but they're not very in-depth, so I wanted to really go in-depth and tell you all about this. And I read the help files on this, so I know quite a bit about it now. So I hope this video will help you. First of all, you want uh, a video clip of your subject in front of a green screen. So here I am, and here's a green screen. So you want some kind of screen that is not very similar to whatever color the foreground object is. So for example, I'm kind of lighter colored with brown hair and some darker stuff. So then I have a green background, or blue background will even work but not a lighter colored background or a dark background like black. So that's just to give you a, an idea of what kind of clip you need. You don't want any wrinkles or anything. I have a few wrinkles, but Final Cut Pro does a good job of removing all of these defects. So to apply the effect to your clip, you want to click the Effects tab, and you want to go from All to Keying and then you want to grab the keyer and you can see it already does a pretty good job so you want to drag that onto your clip and then you can see we have a black background but we don't really want that so I'm going to drag this future inventions background here and I'm just gonna pop it down there drag it out so now we have a background that matches the clip and it has to be underneath it won't work above because then it'll just be overlaying over the clip so you can see it is a pretty good effect we can scroll through and see what we have but we want to adjust the color especially here so if the color is completely wrong the first thing you want to do is put the strength to zero and go to your color sampler now you can drag a box over the area of the color that you want to uh, key out. So I'm going to edit this box a little bit, get some of that, and that's pretty good. This is also really useful if you have other areas that are problems because you can just go right here, sample color over there. That doesn't actually help, so I'm going to drag it over here where I am having problems and you want your box to be as large as possible to cover the greatest range of colors on your green screen so you can also have multiple boxes and the great thing about this is if we go to the color selection you can see here we have a whole color wheel and if I scroll through here these boxes actually work as keyframes so you can see it is changing the color that's being keyed out right there so that is just really cool it's very simple to have a great chroma keying effect so now if I wanna change my edges a little bit maybe they're too hard or too soft I just click this edges tool I drag from the subject to the background and now with this slider I can adjust how my edges look so I'm going to leave it at that for now and I just noticed my strength is at zero so I'm going to uh, max it up. So the strength really changes the uh, range of colors that are keyed out and you can see you normally want that at a hundred percent but if you're getting some problems then you want to lower that a little bit. You can also jump to the different samples you took with the uh, sample color boxes and the edge tool. Now you have three different views. Here's the composite view. You see the background and the foreground together. Here's the matte view. You can see your color mat. The transparent parts are black and your foreground which is showing up is white and there are also some gray areas that show various levels of transparency and then you can just view the original clip. So let me show you fill holes which is a very nice little tool if maybe you have some transparent parts that you don't want to be transparent just up this a little bit and you may even need to uh, use another sample box and I'll show you a great use for this. 
if we look at the original clip, you can see that I made this little fake green logo on my shirt. So if this was an actual logo, you don't want this clear because you, then you can see through your shirt, which doesn't make sense. So with fill holes, we can fill that right up. If I slide it up around four, it works pretty well. But then you can see that we have this little area to the left and right of my head. So if we change the edge distance, we can actually reduce this because it changes the edges that the fill hole effect makes. So now we have it looking pretty nice. We can scroll through again. Uh, you can see we do have another problem area right here. So I'll take my sample color box and just key that out. And we might want to change the edges here. Just play around with it until you get it all right. And you can actually use keyframes on the fill holes effect too. That's fine enough for me. It looks very nice. I do have a few other problems, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to move on. So the spill level is a really, really cool feature in Final Cut Pro X. If we go from our composite to our original, you can see the colors are a little bit different, especially in the star here. In the original, it's green, and now it's kind of grayish, and I'll show you why. The spill level essentially balances out the colors. So say if you have a green screen and it's just really bright and it's making your subjects slightly green, so the green is spilling onto your subjects in the foreground, uh, you can up this effect and it will remove the green. So you can see now this is kind of gray and what was green over here is now back to its natural color and you can go all the way up but it's good around here. You can also invert it so now I have the green screen which is pretty useless in most situations. Color selection, you can do this with the color selection boxes which we already went over. Uh, they make keyframes like I showed you but you can also do it manually. You can change the different levels of brightness, uh, the different colors that it will accept. So if I went all the way over here you can see that it's taking out part of my face and hair and you can adjust the uh, the brightness over here. So lots of different things to play around with. I would stick with the scrub boxes. It's much faster and less hassle-ish. So now let's go to the matte tools and if we take a quick look back this is our matte although I screwed it up there with that color selection. You can see this is our mat. Uh, we do have a few little transparent parts. This we can see and this we do not see which is the green screen. So uh, we can change the levels of this and we can adjust it to our liking. This seems to be fine and just to make this clear this does not affect the sampling. This only affects what is produced from the sampling if that makes any sense. So we can also shrink this and expand it and if we go to our composite view we can see what that does. We can also soften the edges which can be pretty useful and we can erode them too. So very useful. So next we have spill suppress which is basically the spill level which we talked about before but you have a lot more control over it. You can change the contrast of the uh, color that is being suppressed or rather of the suppression. You can tint it and this is exactly like this slider. You can also play around with the saturation. Do a few little things there and light wrap is a really cool feature in my opinion. So when I slide this up you can see the uh, colors here wrap around my head a little bit. You can see the green from the N is kind of coming around my hair as with the blue in between these two letters. 
So this can be pretty useful. You can change the intensity and the amount of the effect and also the opacity. So now I've gotten it to a point where I really like the effect. I can actually change the modes. Now I can't really explain them all right now but if you go into the help section and you go to advanced chroma keying it'll give you a summary of each one of these effects. This brings out kind of the lighter part of everything. Here we have screen. A little different Here's overlay and hard light and these are all different effects so you can play around with it see what you like and finally mix basically mixes in or out the green screen or whatever you've keyed out so now we've gone over all of the controls for chroma keying and let's do a few more examples just two so with this one again we're going to go into the effects and here is the mask for example if I had a problem here and uh, say this part of the green screen was bad then I can drag that over and I just really want to show you that it can be very useful so this part is bad so I'm using the mask and then we're going to go to keyer drop it on there and now we have our effect I'll put something under there this is from my recent review on some cases so I'll plop that down there so here for the mask we have a few little options we can feather it and we can add some roundness and invert it which is always very useful so now let's key this out so I don't like this because you can see you can kind of see through this case onto the one in the background so first of all I want to select my color better so I'm going to select this wider range here and yep that's about right so let's set the strength back up and you can see we still do have some transparency so we're going to fill holes and that corrects it pretty quickly uh, we can fix the edges I like that and let's keep it like that we don't need to change the color selection it looks overall very nice so we pretty much have everything here we can do a little bit of work on the edges and you can see that does make a difference so here we have a very fast very nice chroma key effect and whoops we do have something right here let me move a few frames there let's adjust the fill holes effect and now we can see it's pretty much perfect so now let's move on to this one and this really surprised me and I'll show you why uh, let me take some random clip here this is good nice clip let's drag this down there so this is not an ideal situation we have something that's white over a kind of grayish background and this is why you want to match your green screen whatever you're using with the color of your subject so you want them to be opposites and you can see if we pan over here not a nice effect so uh, now that we have it on it's even worse so now I'm going to sample the color here first let me put the strength down and let's get whoops, let's get a nice range right here because we have that shadow and we have everything and up the strength again and when I was making this little demo this really surprised me because I was able to get a very decent key even with a background that was very similar to the actual object so here we have something that's pretty nice it looks pretty nice even though it's not a great color so this just goes to show that you have to make your green screen right for your subject but you can always work around this stuff so 
I hope you learned a lot in this tutorial. You are now officially a green screen expert. Thanks so much for watching. Please like this video and also comment, tell me what you think about it, ask for any tutorials you want to see in the future, and it would be really awesome if you could check out my Facebook and Twitter page. I post updates very often, all in the description below. See you guys in the next video.